I'd like to read a passage from a book by John Berger. And our faces, my heart, brief as photos. Once in a poem. Poems, even when narrative, do not resemble stories. All stories are about battles of one kind or another, which end in victory and defeat. Everything moves towards the end, when the outcome will be known. Poems, regardless of any outcome, cross the battlefields, tending the wounded, listening to the wild monologues of the triumphant or the fearful. They bring a kind of peace, not by anaesthesia or easy reassurance, but by recognition and the promise that what has been experienced cannot disappear as if it had never been. Yet the promise is not of a monument. Who, still on a battlefield, wants monuments? The promise is that language has acknowledged, has given shelter to the experience, which demanded, which cried out. Poems are nearer to prayers than to stories. But in poetry there is no one behind the language being prayed to. It is the language itself which has to hear and acknowledge. For the religious poet, the word is the first attribute of God. In all poetry, words are a presence before they are a means of communication. Yet poetry uses the same words and more or less the same syntax as, say, the annual general report of a multinational corporation. Corporations that prepare for their profit some of the most terrible battlefields of the modern world. How then can poetry so transform language that, instead of simply communicating information, it listens and promises and fulfills the role of a god? That a poem may use the same words as a company report means no more than the fact that a lighthouse and a prison cell may be built with stones from the same quarry, joined by the same mortar. And the sum total of all these possible relations depends upon how the writer relates to language, not as vocabulary, not as syntax, not even as structure, but as a principle and as a presence. The poet places language beyond the reach of time, or, more accurately, the poet approaches language as if it were a place, an assembly point, where time has no finality, where time itself is encompassed and contained. If poetry sometimes speaks of its own immortality, the claim is more far-reaching than that of the genius of a particular poet in a particular cultural history. Immortality here should be distinguished from posthumous fame. Poetry can speak of immortality because it abandons itself to language in the belief that language embraces all experience, past, present and future. To speak of the promise of poetry would be misleading, for a promise 
projects into the future. And it is precisely the coexistence of future, present and past that poetry proposes. A promise that applies to the present and past as well as to the future can better be called an assurance.